happy on this planet? Well, of course. That's, we have chakras. Everybody know chakras? Yes. It's a meridian, it's a center source of energy that spins in our body. It's about that size of a ball, and we have seven of them. So the crown, the third eye, the throat, the heart, plexus, and the root, I forgot one in between. Thank you. And they all spin a certain direction. Actually, my third eye male is spinning clockwise. My third eye female spin on clockwise. That's why male and female combine each other. Uh, as far as gays, um, they have a body with a spinning of the other opposite sex. So, our goal is to spin the chakras properly. Because when they spin properly, we can actually uh, leave the being of light as we are. Because we are light. And there's something also very important to know is our panel gland, which is right here. It's the size of a raisin, and it's supposed to be flexible as the eye is. Now, the pineal gland helps us to be aware, consciously aware of what's going on, be alert, and to connect also with supreme intelligence from the universe because we are receiving and transmitting information all the time. Well, the problem is, in the society, is uh, that, once again, I'm going to talk about they, the bastards, uh, <laughs> put substances in the food and the air and the, the, the water that we drink called fluoride. Fluoride is known as calcifying the pineal gland, so it doesn't allow us to really be conscious of what's going on. So there's many ways you can decalcify your pineal gland. It's by doing yeah, some pineal pineal gland. Excuse my French. That's so funny. You can do some third eye exercise by looking at someone's eyes, staring. And if you look close and you look behind that person, you actually see four eyes. And if you look really close, it becomes one. Yes. That's what we call the third eye. And you just focus on that. And without thinking, that's the part of meditation. And it helps to make the uh, panel gland flexible again, or decalcify it. There's another way is um, uh, mineral called gorn in ionic state. Um, ionic is the size of an angstrom which is 10,000 times smaller than an atom compared to colloidal. You know, people take vitamins or minerals. You buy minerals out there called uh, colloidal minerals. Oh, colloidal. Yeah, oh. it's like chewing on sand. It cannot be absorbed. It cannot be, uh, it can dissolve in the body. So it's just discharge it, and uh, when it penetrates in your cells and tissues, it stays stuck in your body somewhere like a heavy metal and mm -hmm. creates disorders. Um, so what we need as humans is Ionic minerals. So I'm talking about this. I do a little bit of advertisement. This is my own brand of ionic minerals called the Water Power. It has M state in it. I don't know if anybody is familiar with ORMS, arbitrary rearranged monatomic elements, or monatomic state elements, also known as Qi or Prana or Life Force. You know, people do Qigong. What they do is they take the Qi and concentrate it and put it in themselves. But there's other ways you can harvest the chi with modern alchemy. Alchemy has been used for thousands of years, and uh, you can actually harvest this energy using alchemy or modern alchemy from substances like ocean water or dead sea salts, aloe vera or carrots, which is rich in rhodium and iridium, very beneficial for the brain, and anti-carcinogenic. If someone has cancer, you take worms. You just kill cancer whatever. Take what? Worms. Worms. Or worms. Ormus, O R M U S. M U S. Ormus. Okay. Yeah. So, well, Orms is a is a group of elements that have never been found before because they didn't have the scientific equipment to find them or to discover them until recently. David Hudson in 1984 something somewhere there um, has discovered them. He was a millionaire. Decided to spend millions of dollars on that research, find out what that was because he was growing food on fields and find out this white substance on top because he did some kind of experiment. He decided to, uh, to um, investigate and hire a group of scientists and spend millions of dollars in this research. So it's been found that those substances are called worms or ormus, also M state. And what they are is a group of elements um, which are new. You know, the table of elements, zinc, copper, etc. Well, they create a new one now 
out of this research. In Japan, uh, they are researching, spending some money now in, into the investigating about this, uh, these orms. But I don't want to spend too much time in it. It's just that the orms is a chi or life force. And with modern alchemy, you harvest them in a liquid form, so it's a high concentration of chi. So instead of doing one hour of Qigong, you drink, you take one drop. Actually, that's what I do. I put one drop under my tongue. I use gold orms, which I can do. I have a friend of mine in Colorado who does it. He's a master alchemist for 35 years. Uh, there's a couple of alchemists here in Florida, uh, Don Nance in Tampa, and also uh, Chris Emmons. She lives in Key Lago. She has an Ormus lab day once a year, and I had the uh, great honor to uh, meet with her at her house, and she did a lab day for one year. We did a white dragon. It was fizzing for two hours, actually six hours, nonstop like champagne. And it's, those elements are fantastic. They have different uh, particularities in, for example, bilocating or disappearing, reappearing, or going through different substances, or they just flash. Um, so it, it's very exciting. It's, it's a form of consciousness that is living in a different dimensional level. And what we do is we harvest and bring it into this dimensional level. That's what it is, basically. And when you do that, you, you host them, you welcome them, because they, they were not ready to come in our world. So we invite them, and we thank them, and we consume them. And what it does to our body, it helps the cells to communicate better with one another. It's a superconductive. It helps the brain also to uh, feed the microtubules, which is the source of consciousness and materialistic. Uh, it does amazing things like turning gray hair back to color, etc. So the uh, water power has orms in it, which is based from uh, uh, pure water, uh, ocean water. So it's a great thing. And uh, this product also contains all the uh, minerals from planet Earth, including born in ionic state. So when you drink that, you actually de deactivate your, uh, your fluoride or decalcify your pentagram. Across uh, the street, there's Hippocrates Health Institute. This is actually from Adia Clarity and ends with the M state, the orms. Adia Clarity doesn't have it. Uh, it's been studied by uh, Dr. Clement for the last eight months, mm -hmm. and it's been clear that this product is absolutely phenomenal. In recent research with uh, Dr. Gerald Pollack, who's uh, a scientist at Washington University for the last 35 years, has the great courage to study about water and find out about something called liquid crystal. And that's what explains when you jump high from a cliff that the water is so hard. It's actually liquid crystal. The difference between the water and the air between creates a space called the exclusion zone, or easy. The exclusion zone is what we call liquid crystal. This is pure liquid crystal. Uh, this deactivates all the contaminants and the chemicals in the water. You can use tap water, um, any type of use. The ones that came at New Age Cafe, you saw that Zephy Hills bottle they had. I put some in it. It will deactivate all the contaminants and chemicals and turn back in color, which is the natural color of the uh, chemicals. And then they drop to the bottom because these restructure the water as well. It splits the water molecules in half that makes the water thinner or wet water. When you drink water that's thin, like you do the, um, the Kangen one, right? Kangen is a wonderful thing because Kangen use electrolysis ionizing to split the water molecules in half to make them thinner. So when you drink Kangen water, the water can be more efficiently penetrated in your cells and tissues. <coughs> that means a more profound hydration and better delivery of the energy in it. When you electrolysis the water, you create more hydrogen. And you create um, structured water. Structured water. And that's what we're looking for. Uh, any fruitarians in the room? Well, these fruitarians just eat fruits. And they're doing very well. They lose their teeth in a couple of years, that's what I was asking before. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in the fruits, you actually have a structured water because the fruit itself reorganizes the water to a certain way so it can expand and, and build itself as the nourisher, as, uh, as the, uh, the food as we know. And that's what we're looking for, is hexagonal type of water. Hexagonal is like this. Okay. It's five-sided. And if you look at six sides, yeah, it's six. So, 
So here, you know, HO2, basically, it's uh, oxygen and two hydrogen, right? So when the water comes out of the, uh, the tap water, which is very disorganized, it's not structured at all. When you drink water, you drink, 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 you don't feel hydrated. Why? Because, first of all, the water is too thick. It's 20 molecules, 16 molecules per water unit. So the cluster is too thick to penetrate in your cells and tissues. You can't be hydrated. And it doesn't contain much minerals in it. So it's just drink water for nothing. Of course, they penetrate at some extent. That's why you don't die. But the problem with water that is not structured, it has an angle of 104.45 degrees. And what it means, it means that it doesn't connect together. It just creates a package of water clusters that, that goes into your body and just disorganized. So the water is stressed because water is meant to be in a circular motion. Just like the wave crushing into the shore, or the water banks, you see the rivers, or the water from down to mountain springs from one rock to another creates real pools, vortexes. Uh, you can study um, Victor Schubert, you can during the Second World War. He studied water for years. He was a forester and, and naturalist, not a doctor, but he came up with amazing discoveries that should be learned today and utilized to be able to, uh, to create energy. Because water and sun and light, actually infrared radiation, can create energy. And I'm going to prove it to you in a few weeks. 